Hello Info Prism, this is Anton, and once again we're going to be discussing some of the more recent updates and some of the more interesting updates from the James Webb Space Telescope. With the main focus once again being the images from the telescope, with a brief explanation for each of the images released as well, and this time there were actually quite a lot of different really impressive images, with many, like this one right here, once again revealing so much new information that has previously been invisible to us. And so let's discuss some of these new images and some of the new discoveries in more detail, and let's actually start right here. If you watched one of the previous videos from a few weeks ago, you might already know exactly what we're looking at right here. This is one of the most recently released images from the James Webb of the iconic Tarantula Nebula, which represents an extremely active star-forming region in the nearby galaxy known as Large Magellanic Cloud. We've discussed this galaxy in one of the previous videos when I actually talked about some of the recent discoveries from the iconic star known as R136A1, the most massive star known to us. And that particular star is located in this region, and is actually even visible in this image, although it's relatively small because there are so many other stars in here. But this time, the image released by the James Webb simply uncovered a lot of detail that was previously invisible by Hubble and by a lot of other telescopes. And so we don't actually know what's going to be discovered here just yet, because all of this is completely brand new information. But because all of this is obviously publicly available, the researchers are now going to be studying this, trying to discover something new in the process. But what makes these future studies super exciting, and actually what makes this image really exciting as well, is the fact that in terms of chemical composition, and also in the way that the stars form here, this particular region is very similar to a lot of star-forming regions observed in the universe approximately 9 to 10 billion years ago, the period we often refer to as the cosmic noon. And so because of these similarities, this region has always been super intriguing for the scientists, helping them understand the entire evolution process of the universe for the past 12 billion years. And so in this case, the Tarantula Nebula is literally like looking back in time, but basically on our doorsteps which is why I'm sure there are going to be so many intriguing studies about this image in the next few months. The next on the list is this image from the recent study you can find in the description below that once again discovers a really intriguing star, an extremely magnified star located in a galaxy that existed 11.2 billion years ago. And in this case, a star magnified by about 10,000 times. Although in this particular case, it doesn't really break any records because it's not really the most distant star neither it is the oldest, but it's still an extremely intriguing discovery, especially because there's only like a handful of these objects that have ever been discovered, with all of them discovered because of the very powerful gravitational landing effects formed by some kind of an extremely massive cluster in front of the object. And intriguingly enough, this particular concept was still theoretical back in the 90s. And one of the first examples of an extremely magnified star was only discovered in 2018. This is a star we discussed known as Icarus, located at the redshift of 1.5. And much more recently, only a few months ago, we discussed the most distant star discovered, known as Arendelle, located at the redshift of 6.2. You can find the video somewhere in the description. But in this new study, what makes this detection particularly interesting is that it actually kind of seems to be a double magnification. It's magnified by the cluster, but it's also magnified by some kind of a solar mass microlens which may suggest it has some kind of a partner. And because of the extremely high magnification here, the scientists already have a lot of details about this star. It seems to be some kind of a blue supergiant with a surface temperature of anywhere between 7 to 12,000 Kelvin, and it also naturally seems to be very bright, and very likely resembling what you see right here. But because the lifespan for such a star is usually only a few million years, it means that this star only existed for a very short period of time before disappearing and most likely becoming a neutron star or maybe a black hole. So once again, this is actually a chance discovery. And speaking of gravitational lensing, very recently one of the Reddit users, whose link you can find in the description, was able to process one of the images from the James Webb, capturing an almost perfect Einstein ring, approximately 12 billion light years away from us, showing us some kind of a galaxy that's aligned in just the perfect way to create this beautiful image. Although what's interesting here is that it actually looks differently depending on the instrument used. This is what it looks like in the near infrared, and this is what it looks like in the mid infrared, which by itself is already just enough data for some of the scientists to potentially start analyzing exactly what's happening here, and maybe even recreate the original image. But because of the extreme distance to this object, it's still going to be kind of difficult to recreate this, but we know that this is a galaxy. Next on the list is an exoplanet. The first ever image of an exoplanet 
directly captured by the James Webb using its infrared instruments. This is a planet known as HIP 65426b, originally discovered back in 2017 and roughly around 385 light years away from us. And a planet that was already seen by other instruments as well. So this isn't really a discovery as much as a test of the instruments and the ability for the James Webb to see these planets as well. And in this case, what this proves is that we're now able to see planets in very specific infrared frequencies that were previously invisible to us. And so this super Jupiter that's about 6 to 8 times more massive than Jupiter itself, and also orbits an A-type star, was not just easily visible, but also visible in a lot more detail that the other telescopes are just not able to produce, which allows the scientists to see these planets in a much wider view that was previously unavailable to them because of the limitations in different wavelengths. And because of this, the scientists can now actually obtain a lot of properties of these planets, including things like mass, temperature, radius, and even in further composition, simply based on the wavelengths observed. And because here they use seven different filters, and each of them allows certain wavelengths to pass, it allows the scientists to see so much more detail than ever before. And more importantly, they can now apply this to much smaller exoplanets as well. And though unfortunately we may not be able to see some of the terrestrial planets just yet, Seeing the smaller gas giants and planets like Neptune and Uranus now becomes a possibility as well. But what exactly we're going to be finding about this planet in the future, or what other planets we're going to be discovering, is still not really known to us. And then we have the gorgeous images from the iconic galaxy known as M74, also known as Phantom Galaxy. And in this case, this was actually taken by two separate telescopes, the Hubble and the James Webb. And the main reason the scientists used two telescopes was actually to try to see what the difference is going to be. Specifically, they actually wanted to focus on different frequencies. And so the Hubble image that's on the left is definitely very different from the web image that's in infrared on the right. And when combined in the middle, it really transforms how we've always imagined this particular galaxy, which looks entirely different from how we saw it originally. This is back from 2013, nearly nine years ago. And here is the same image taken by the Infrared Spitzer Telescope. And this galaxy has already been studied for many years. It's about 32 million light years away from us. It's also an iconic type of a spiral galaxy, also known as Grand Design Spiral, because of its prominent and well-defined spiral arms. But what's invisible in these optical images, and what's hidden by the gas, are all of the super active regions where the stars actually form. So this is the image from the James Webb. And each of these red spots are these huge clouds of hydrogen gas, known as H2 regions, where there's a lot of star formation, very similar to previously mentioned Tarantula Nebula. Except in this case, we actually have so many of them all over the place. With these regions being one of the main reasons for these images. Mostly because we believe that the Milky Way galaxy very likely looks something like this as well, just from a different angle. And in this case, the Hubble's view of this galaxy shows us the older and the much more red stars toward the center of the galaxy and the younger bluer stars in the spiral arms, while also showing us some of the active stellar formation in the red bubbles. However, the James Webb image is extremely different. It highlights the masses of gas inside the galactic arms, but also shows us extremely dense clusters formed by different massive stars, especially the one at its core. You can sort of see this if you zoom into this image. And this is something we've never actually seen before until these recent images. The Hubble image unfortunately is not able to distinguish any of this. And then the combined image presents this galaxy as the mixture of two. And that's very likely what our own galaxy looks like as well. But this is just the first of 19 upcoming images of different nearby star forming galaxies. Galaxies that are very likely similar to our own, but also tend to produce a lot of stars at the same time. So we're going to be seeing 18 more in the next few months, with the main purpose naturally being understanding the star formation and star evolution in various galaxies. And so within a year from now, we're most likely going to have a lot of intriguing pictures and a lot of intriguing answers. But not yet. Well, let's go to the next image. Okay, not really an image, as much as the observation of the atmosphere of a distant brown dwarf. Specifically, the one that very likely looks something like this. This is a simulation created by NASA a few years ago. And this time, the scientists were able to directly observe some of the atmosphere and specifically some of the clouds in this particular brown dwarf. The silicate clouds in the atmosphere of the brown dwarf, located 72 light years away from us, 
known as VHS 1256-1257B, originally discovered approximately 7 years ago, with the brown dwarf being about 19 times the mass of Jupiter, but also being relatively young, while also being relatively reddish in color, very likely because of its atmosphere. And previously it's been assumed that it's actually because of the specific types of silicate clouds located in the upper atmosphere. And so by looking at this brown dwarf in the infrared, the team behind the study in the description discovered water, methane, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, sodium, potassium, and silicate particles, silicate clouds, very likely formed by various types of minerals such as phosphorite, anstatite, and quartz. All of this as extremely small grain particles, much smaller than sand, forming these very large clouds. Which actually confirms that in certain young brown dwarfs, these very thick clouds can influence, observe brightness, and can actually make them appear much different from other brown dwarfs. And so a pretty interesting discovery for the scientists studying these objects. So definitely quite a lot of really exciting new images and a lot of potential discoveries. But it will probably take a few months before we actually get to understand the real significance of some of these images, because the studies are not out yet. For now we only have the images. And so just like with the study based on the early images approximately a month ago that studied some of the most ancient galaxies out there and determined that the galaxies in the past evolved very differently from how we believe they evolved, which by itself is already a pretty groundbreaking discovery and you can learn more about this in the video in the description or somewhere right there, it will probably take some time before we can appreciate and understand what these new images and new discoveries mean as well. Which of course means that we're going to be coming back to all of this in some of the future videos very likely next week. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that now features James Webb as well. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.